Okay, I'm going to demonstrate how to make a control chart using uh, SPSS. And uh, here I have some uh, sample data that's collected, and uh, we can see that measurements are made unit by unit. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and make a control chart. So I'm going to go to the Analyze menu, and then Quality Control and Control Charts. All right, and we have a few different options here. Uh, when you're measuring units, uh, you can either take samples over a period of time or you can get individual units. And since I'm using individual units, I'm going to select the individual's moving range. I'll click Define. And uh, the process that I want to measure is in the data column here, so I'll send that over. And then the subgroups are labeled by units. So I'll send that over. All right, next I'm going to go ahead and look at the control rules. And for this, we're going to be actually doing two things. We're going to be looking at the data case by case and looking for patterns. So I'm going to go ahead and select all these control rules because it'll make it easier to see the patterns. I'll click continue. All right, and then we want to see if the process, not only is it in control and uh, not exhibiting patterns, but we want to see if it meets a, maybe a customer's specified uh, limits. All right, so this data uh, is, is uh, being collected for a process, and the, the specified limits, I'm just going to make them up here. Uh, we're going to say it's between 110 and 90, and then it's supposed to be centered on, oops, 100. Okay, so to measure the capability, we're going to use this CP ratio. Uh, we can also check off CPU, CPL, and CPK, which is the minimum of CPU or CPL. Okay, after that, we're ready to create our chart and talk about it. Okay, so uh, based on this data, here is our control chart. All right, this uh, thick line here in the middle is the mean. All right, these dashed lines are the customer specified limits. All right, and the outside dashed lines are plus or minus three standard deviations from the mean. All right, so we can see that um, for the most part, we have, we have quite a few points outside the customer specified range. All right, so it looks probably like we're not uh, meeting their goals, although we're meeting our process goals being within plus or minus three standard deviations. All right, and then these red points indicate where um, there was some pattern that violates a rule about uh, randomness generated. All right, so I'll, I'll scroll down a little bit to, to sort of talk about that. Um, the control chart just gives a slightly different view. All right, and this is comparing, all right, unit by unit, the absolute uh, difference between uh, between those units. All right, and and again, sort of looking at whether or not we are uh, within a specified range. All right, so the lower limit of this would be zero, so there's no variation unit to unit. All right, versus what we're seeing here which looks like a lot of variation. Now that doesn't by itself mean it's necessarily bad because you know we expect some variation around a process. We just hope that it's within a, a normal range. All right, so going down and looking at the rules. All right, so those red points up there, it said that that violated a rule and talked about um, being four points out of the last five being more than one standard deviation. Uh, above the mean. All right, so that happened twice. All right. All right, so then we can look at the process statistics, the capability, and uh, basically uh, we're looking for a capability of at least one. All right, so the CP is the ratio of uh, how many of our uh, objects or uh, production units uh, are within uh, the customer specified limits. All right, so we can see that only about uh, 31 percent are in those limits right here. All right, the CPK can be interpreted a couple of different ways. Um, essentially, what we're looking for is okay, is the process centered? All right, and since we're not even meeting, all right, the 
um, the customer the customer specifications, then uh, it doesn't really make any sense to worry about whether or not it's centered. All right. The the CPK can be used uh, when you're meeting uh, the the customer's limits. All right, but the process isn't necessarily centered. So we want to know is it centered, uh, or are we sort of uh, going a, a, a little bit over or a little bit under too frequently. All right, so that's what the CPL and the CPU can tell us. Are we going over or under a little too frequently? These numbers should be essentially equal. All right, that would indicate uh, a symmetric uh, a manufacturing process or, or whatever, the, whatever the thing we're analyzing is. All right, uh, essentially what we want here though with a CPK is something over one again to indicate that we are centered and meeting our customers uh, needs okay so I hope that helps with the control chart